Hi everyone, it's Raziel Kane, and today I'm really happy to have found Jetfire, and we're gonna review him. Well, I will, and you'll watch, and hopefully you'll like it. I know I'm late on this guy, absolutely late. I skipped on him because when I started collecting, I was seeing figures at 39, 29, you know, even leader class were 65 to 79, depending where you went. And I thought that was already pretty much, you know, the budget I was setting myself for. And uh, he was 109, 119, depending on where you went. So I was like, yeah, that's too much. I'm not gonna get him. Three years later, I need him. I found him at Toy Snowman and uh, there was a bit of a late tax on it. Uh, not too much, you know, just a little bit, but I had received some uh, birthday money. So it's like, yeah, maybe I'll go for that big bot that I've been wanting for a while. Everybody was telling me, oh, you should get the Shattered Glass if you skipped out on Siege and that he's okay. Yeah, but Shattered Glass is black. I wanted the cartoon version, you know, so I'm happy to found him. And don't get me wrong, the Shattered Glass uh, is a very, very nice figure. The paint is amazing, but um, nostalgia wise, I needed my uh, cartoon accurate one. And uh, he was a very interesting character. We only saw him a couple times, uh, well, maybe more than a couple, but there was that whole controversy with uh, Takara Tomi and Asbro, um, you know, where Asbro wanted to use it and Takara Tomi was like, no, don't use it because he's part of our competitor line. And go watch Rodimus Primal's video. He's probably covered it more than anybody else. So um, if you want to learn more about that, uh, definitely check him out. He's one of the best out there. Uh, for my part, I'll do a quick toy review because uh, I'm excited to have him. And uh, he's big, he's bulky. Like he's, he pretty much set the standard for a commander class. Uh, followed by Skylinks, who was also pretty, pretty big, which I don't have. And then everybody complained with Rodimus Prime because he wasn't as big. And you know what? Now that I have uh, Jetfire, yeah, I can see where the complaints coming from. But for sheer amount of plastic, I think they're pretty on par. But Jetfire looks a little more impressive. But before we take a look at Skyfire, I've been mispronouncing his name since the beginning, I'm sorry. Uh, before we take a look at Skyfire, you might want to check out my voice acting playlist because that's the main feature of my channel, something I'm rather proud of. But without further delay, let's take a look at Skyfire. So as you can tell, my current setup is completely inadequate to uh, review this figure. He's way bigger than my backdrop, and um, but you know what, we'll do with it. Um, we're going to take a look first, I'll clear up some space, so we're going to take a look at the box first. Uh, you have him with Omega Supreme here, and a couple other bots for sure. Uh, you have a couple of Seekers here, maybe Starscream, who knows, but he's so not cartoon accurate. He didn't appear like that at all in the show, so they used to give him the whole battle armor, uh, which was reminiscent of his Macross time. And you have here um, the cartoon accurate look, but uh, the combat ready. And uh, but they don't have the the blade, uh, which he had on the show, so that wasn't uh, featured in this. And you have all the accessory. This part here is stored in here. We'll show it in a moment. But uh, I actually freaked out because couldn't find him because the instruction don't tell you that they're in there. And then you have his plane mode, which kind of inspire me for the French word of the day, futuristic, which means futuristic. It's a direct translation because this is what I would expect a future jet to look like, maybe in a hundred years or something like that, because that's a very cool plane mode. Uh, love this uh, this box. Uh, I'm not a. I'm a mint box collector but the artwork on this is really prominent really well done very detailed uh, you have the arc on this side commander class and uh, you know you have a another ship here i don't know it's kind of looks like cyclonus but anyway that's just me and my imagination so great looking box uh let me rearrange this a little bit to uh, continue with the accessories 
Okay, first the blast effects, really nice, different from, I thought they were the same as Omega Supreme, but they're not, they're uh, three parts, so this, this one here, and this one here, uh, they're a little bended, but I guess you can, you know, dip them in uh, hot water for a while and then straighten them out, uh, so, but they're, uh, they're really nice, and you can peg them in the gun, or you can use them as a uh, uh, flame effect on uh, the plane mode, so uh, rocket mode, so yeah, um, you know, nice uh, blast effect. I've heard that if you leave your blast effect on the figures or the accessories for too long, some sort of uh, chemical reaction where they're gonna kind of stick a little too much together and it it can damage the, uh, the, the, the accessory or the blast effect and I'm not gonna risk it. So most blast effect just end up in a bag uh, that I use if I wanna do some pictures. Eventually it's probably my kid's gonna find it and just rip it open and spread stuff everywhere, but I'll live with that. Second, you have the chest plate, and the chest plate is actually real nice. I'm not going to use it because I don't have an affinity for that particular mode, but uh, it holds the uh, the mask, and uh, it's a really nicely crafted mask. Uh, translucent blue, and uh, you can see inside it's all covered, like everything covers the inside of the mask, and then you can just, uh, well, let's equip him as, as we go. You can put it on his face like this to give him that uh, battle look so that's pretty cool and then the chest plate took me a while to figure it out because I didn't read the instruction fast enough basically you have those two pegs here that are well hidden and hard to pry off if you've cut your nail recently which I happened to do yesterday because I knew I was shooting a review so basically those two pegs are gonna end up here so it's quite simple and of course on camera it's really hard to do uh, hold on there you go click click so you see now he's a little bulkier and then the instructions will tell you to add these guns um, Never used them on the cartoon show. I don't think I've seen those on the War for Cybertron show, but they're quite nice. I wish he had the blades. I did order a blade from Firetox. He used to sell them on his uh, Etsy store. I'm sure it's going to come back soon. And uh, hold on, I'm just trying to get the hold. There you go. I ordered the blades because I do want to have that one thing from the show uh, that's not included in this box, so that's pretty cool. And then you have those two um, missiles slash gun. They unpeg like this. And uh, you can do, well, what the way did you show you? Ah, see, I just noticed I mistransformed them. Forgot to put the wings up. So basically what the instruction will tell you is take this and put it here like this. And this, and then you have these things here, which will clip and uh, these pegs here. So you go like this. The other one like this. Ah, oh, I just unclipped the chest. That's great. Let just let me uh, clean this up for you guys, and I'll be right back. And there you go, uh, Jetfire. This is probably you know a, the better use of the name Jetfire, because to me he's always going to be Skyfire. Although since the War for Cybertron show, I've been having a hard time calling him Skyfire for some reason. But growing up, that's Skyfire. So this is a very... Oh, and then he has that gun, Ooze. I'll remove later, it's super tight, but uh, it fits really tight in his hands, both hands. And uh, they have that, uh, they separate, and then you can, you know, he can dual wield uh, smaller guns or... But I think he's fantastic. I'm gonna remove the accessories, clean them up, and then we'll do some size comparisons. I said that I was gonna do uh, articulation, but we're gonna take a look at the figure itself uh, before. I'm going backwards these days. So superbly detailed he's really great uh the, all the these little molded details on his arms he's a true cybertronian uh, very mechanical 
uh, translucent light, um, uh, not light, uh, window. Um, I love that translucent blue. Uh, you know, you can tell, you know, his rocket pack is very prominent in his back. Uh, so does uh, his wings. Um, the legs are pretty big. Mine are actually, unfortunately, um, pretty loose. I'm having a hard time posing him uh, when I tried to split him. I did use quite a bit amount of, of Kiki, uh, but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. So I'll have to add a couple uh, layers of Kiki, but he's a very nicely painted, nicely molded, very cartoon accurate representation of Skyfire. The head will rotate 360. You have a articulation here <laughs> when you transform him, uh, the head goes in there and you can still see, you know, bit of the head. So that's kind of weird. But um, I understand that this um, was, it, I, it probably wasn't easy to achieve for Hasbro to hide all the robot parts and not having too many holes and waffles. And, and if you take a look, compared to most figures, he doesn't have that many waffles. The legs are full only here, but even then, um, I'd say very small hole. Um, you know, you have a bit here for transformation, uh, but he's really good. Um, the wings go up and down and you can, if you want to pose him differently, you can lift the wings like this. If you want to have a more extended look, I think it looks dumb. Um, but because of the wings, oh, the nice ratchet, you can't, you can't pose the, the wings anyway where you could do a 360 rotation on the arms. Although the joint is made for that. You have a very good band at the elbow. Uh, and you have, again, many ratchets. And uh, he's, they're really tight, so when you transform him, uh, it's, uh, it takes a while to, uh, to do it. Uh, the hand will do a 360. Mine doesn't peg really well, though. Like, uh, I don't know if it's because I'm putting this on the wrong side. I've tried a couple different things. This peg goes here, and it's supposed to hold, but somehow it always unpegs a little bit. So I'm going to have to fiddle with that, uh, uh, you know, place it properly. So, uh, of course, same thing on the other hand. Uh, there's no... Oh, I am absolutely wrong. There is a slight ab rotation. I'm looking at this here where my finger is pointing and I think that's what yeah it's blocking him for do from doing a full rotation but it probably could do it uh, the joint is there uh, you lift the skirts on the side and you're able to split him like a log very nice uh, there's no well there's a oh yeah all right, so you have a 90 rotation at the hip joint. You have a nice, it's blocked by the kibble, but you have a nice uh, knee band. And again, plenty of ratchets. I don't know why they didn't use ratchets here. You know what? I'm actually glad they didn't because I just bought Redgar from the SX86 line and the ratchet joint was so tight that I broke the leg clean off. So you know what? I'm glad this is just a tension joint uh, what else you got you have uh, toe and heel bending and you have if I'm correct uh, there's a joint here I'm just there you go oh it's tight but you have a very nice rocker so you can have him do a weird split but there you go um, and then of course he can kick forward and because of this, he cannot kick backwards. So always face your opponent from the front with this guy. Uh, hold on. There you go. So there you go. Those are the articulations on um, Skyfire. If I've missed anything, please comment. So now I'm going to set him aside and I'm going to go get some friends to compare him with. Give me a moment. Fellow cast member played by the same voice actor, Greg Berger, Grimlock from the Studio Series 86 line with the Toy Hags decals. Leader bot Optimus Prime, which there's a major size difference here. Former scientist friend Earthrise Starscream. And just for the heck of it, Siege Omega Supreme, who's taking all the space.
Okay, and now the moment that you've been waiting for. Uh, transformation. <laughs> but before I do the transformation, I totally forgot, guys, to show you uh, the instructions. Here are the instructions. You forget, Starscream! I can transform too! You're gonna take him, flip him back, and then... This was Miss Transform earlier, I'm sorry, but you wanna take this, leave these two... Uh, lift these two up, and then take this and push it down like this. And we're done. All right, it's too big for my screen. Um, look at that. This is fantastic. From this angle, and you know, if you put him like this, he's perfect. If you look like this, yeah, there's a couple hole here, here, you know, here. But I can live with that. Well, you know, when you put him like this, uh, looks like uh, he's holding himself together very, very, very uh, poorly. But I don't care. He's a fantastic alt mode. And all right, so I'm going to have to, I don't know, maybe I'll just keep him in my hand. This is a fantastic mode. The window here, the translucent blue, um, this whole section here, uh, the rocket pad, and then they have the details where he's launching bombs from the show. That's fantastic. Uh, the the details are good. Uh, there's not many articulation in this mode. Uh, there's nothing moves. It's pretty solid. All the ratchety joint. Uh, they do their job properly. Everything is solid. Uh, he's hefty, you know. And look at this awesome landing gear. These three wheels here are perfect. And they do. Well, I'm gonna push that back, I guess. They do a great job. Now, let me show you what the instruction tells you to do with all the extra stuff. Okay, so they tell you to do something like this. So basically what you do is you take the side arms and you put them under here. They clip on this side uh, of the chest plate and also inside of the gun. You put the gun in the middle. It all clips really tightly. These things clip very poorly with uh, this type of uh, peg. And it's loose if you knock it. There you go. There you go. If you knock it, it falls. If you, you know, brush it, it falls. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just my copy. And uh, I truly hope that uh, everybody else's copy is doing a better job. And then you take this. I guess you fold this down. And you put it here. And you know what? I'm not going to force it. But you get the idea. I'm not going to do that. But what is cool is that you can uh, take these things and put them here. Ah, it's really tight. And then you have um, propulsor mode when the, uh, the jets are activated. So that's pretty neat. And then you have these four things here. They don't tell you what they do. They're just there. But I think I have an idea of what they're supposed to be used for. Yay! Sorry, I'm being silly. There's probably an episode where they actually did something like that. And you know what? If I find it, I'm putting the video right now. So let me transform him back and give you my final thoughts. <laughs> I'm too darn big to sneak around like this. Okay, back from transformation, and there's one feature I forgot to mention. And, uh, okay, well, first, you know, as you know, the gun split, so if you can have him dual wheel. So we're going to do that. You flip this part here, you take this one, and then you flip it up. So now you have two little guns. But uh, what's cool is that if you look at the hand, when you open his hand, oh, well, of course, mine on pegs because it's freaking loose, but look the holes disappear. So if you want, you can have an open palm thing uh, pose and not have the peg. But the thing is that this peg is extremely tight. Like, it's uh, it, it works better with the small gun, but when I put in uh, the, the dual cannon, it's extremely tight. 
Hold on, I'm having a little issue here. There you go. So there you go. It's probably not how I'm going to display him, but uh, this is Jetfire. Now, of course, he's unpegged and everything, but I am so pleased to have found this guy. I'm really happy. And it was quite an adventure because I did a, um, the option to pick him up in Montreal because my dad and my brother-in-law are, well, my sister are in the area. So I got them to uh, pick it up and it was more of a hassle for them than it was for me. So I truly apologize, Dad and uh, Pierre-Antoine for that. But in the end, he's here. I'm happy. And this is my review. So I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment. I love reading those. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.